okay, I just want to walk you guys through using this PASCO. And, and generally what I'm going to show you applies to all the sensors. So first off, you need to realize that this is a data logger. You can just think of it as a data logger. Um, so it will store the data on there, but you'll have to transfer it back onto a computer if you want to work it up into Excel or anything. So the general um, thinking behind this data logger is, first off, it's got a little microcomputer in there, and when you turn it on, it looks out to find the sensor. So before you turn it on, so it's, it's just a dumb, stupid computer in that way. It's not like uh, Windows-based. Um, one feature of this is it does have an extension cord, and that's all this is, is an extension cord for all the different sensors. So you can use it if needed. For the um, vapor pressure lab, you will need the extra cord. Um, the next piece of it is every sensor has a blue box, which is also the chip that actually runs the hardware of the sensor. So you, um, the, the thermometer is the only one that also has one built in. If you'll look on the side, there's actually two thermometer plugins. You can use those as an alternative. Um, for the pressure lab, we like to use the uh, thermometer plugin that's built into these boxes. But again, the thinking is, if you have a sensor, so there's that, and then I also have a, um, this is actually the pressure sensor piece here. They, they usually have a blue box that they work through. So later when you use a pH plug, you'll get the pH attachment, but then you'll have to go through a blue box to get to the data logger. So you need a blue box because it's what actually has the software that commands the data logger and says, oh, we're doing temperature. So it changes the voltage and current into something you can use as far as reading temperature. So um, the way the pressure sensor works is there's a little O-ring in here, and that's actually what makes the airtight seal. It is not a screw thread. It's actually an O-red ring thread. So when you get it right, you push it on, and you'll hear it lock. It will actually click, and that's how you know it's on. And when you need to take it off, you just give a slight pressure in, and you'll hear it unclick, and then out it comes. And it's real important that you understand that idea because you don't want to try and like unthread it or you'll break this seat here. So now you have your pressure reader actually on. I hear it click. And for this particular lab, the idea, and I'm going to unclick it for a minute just so you can see the setup, is we're going to do vapor pressure in the headspace above a liquid that's inside this um, round bottom flask which happens to have a flat bottom, but it's helpful for standing up. So, I'll just put a little fluid in there just for an example. So for this particular lab, if you want to make a good seal with the septa, you need to bring the lip down. Okay, and then if you want to get in a little extra insurance, you might even put some parafilm around here so that you have a good seal. Um, and there's a more elaborate setup you'll see. Uh, I'll send you pictures of it. But when you're actually measuring the fluid, according to um, like Clossy's Clapeyron equation, then what you want to do is actually have the the temperature of the fluid not in the headspace. So the temperature probe has to be down inside the, the little thermocouple has to be down inside the liquid. So you're now ready to actually measure the vapor pressure with this box in the headspace above this fluid at different temperatures. And that literally is the experiment. We're going to actually heat up this little flask it's going to build up high vapor pressure. We're going to keep it open so nothing blows apart. Then what we're going to do is start data logging. We're going to snap this into place and measure the pressure as the temperature drops. And then you're going to have all these pressure temperature points to work out the uh, constant. So that's the general 
idea of the lab, but more importantly, I kind of want to talk to you about how these data loggers work because that's, that's kind of the magic. So we're going to use um, the temperature and pressure because that's going to give us a couple points to measure and that's going to be kind of nice. I'm going to pause that for just a second. It does not. Okay, so we're, we're back here and I just wanted to show you um, the main idea is that before I turn this thing on, I want to make sure that my um, blue box is inserted here. And just so you know, if, if you didn't have the extension cord on this thing, and you were running separate, just so you understand how these work in general, these blue boxes plug directly into the side. So that'll be the equivalent. But we're trying to use the extension cord. So that's how that thinking is on these. So here we go. I'm going to just put this on. Um, make sure I get my temperature back in here. And so now that my probe's hooked in, now if I turn on power, and usually by turning on power, the best thing is to just first plug them in. And give it a second. We actually, and by the way, this is a great uh, example. You get in here, you got no power, you push this. You got no power, you're like, what's going on? Actually, if you'll turn that camera around here, it looks like this thing has been reset. And so it needs to be, there we go, get power back in here. Let's see if that'll give us, there we go. And so, the, yeah, those, uh, those GFI plugs, if they get uh, water or whatever on them, they'll click off. So now, if you can see the screen. Yep, you're good there. You'll notice that it has found two things. It's found absolute pressure and it's found temperature. So that's great because that's what, you know, we, the two probes we have on there. Um, and just so you know some different scenarios that happen. Sometimes you turn these on, they're blank. You have a screen, but it's blank. Don't despair. You actually, up here in the heading, it says what sensor are you looking for? So one of your options is you can highlight it. And once that's highlighted, then you can click it again and it pulls down and, it's, and it shows you the option. So you could put pressure on the top or temperature on the top and switch them. If at that point you pull that screen down and you don't see any sensors registered, then you need to go um, back to shutdown and then turn it back up with this, these plugs. Just double check your plugs, make sure they're in. My point being is if you turn that on and pull that down and you don't see the sensor, then this box has not found that box. That's what that's telling you. But don't despair if it's blank. That doesn't mean that that's happened. Make sure you get in here, pull down your screen first, and see if there's um, the sensors are available. Okay? Then generally speaking, as you're walking around the design of this data logger, um, home screen gets you to all the menus that this data log logger has access to. The ones that you uh, we're going to use today is we're going to, if you want to look at your sensors and do any um, changing on the sensors, it's in the bottom right hand side. So you arrow over, arrow down, and then once you select, it'll open up that box. And right in here, for example, you can see the sampling rate. It says samples per second and the sample rate is 10. That means it's taking every second 10 data points, that's going to fill up a lot of data. So if you want, you might want to scroll down there, pull that down and maybe make it one per second. Or if you want, you can even go here and you can change it to like seconds. And then that means one sample rate every second. And then you can start changing the number and get two um, two seconds in between sample rates. So you can kind of change this up, but we're going to stick with what we are doing there, samples per second. We'll just get one per second. That'll be reasonable. Um, but you'll see this later in the pH probe and some of that stuff. Anything you do with the sensor, anytime you're calibrating it, et cetera, et cetera, that's that bottom right-hand screen where you go to the sensor. So <clears throat> a couple kind of features here. You have a digit screen, which is the one we are on, which makes it, you can just, 
look directly at it as if it's a, um, a meter and you're just reading it live. And this is not too bad for this pressure lab to begin with. You want to check the seals. And one of the good tests I have is if you, um, let's see if I can get this thing to behave for a second. Can you still see that all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. One of the good tests, and I can look at this SEPTA, and, and I'm already questioning its integrity as far as whether it's just old and needs to be thrown away. But if it's good, I'm going to pull this out. When I put this SEPTA in, it should increase the pressure. And if it's got a good seal, that will actually hold for a minute. Oh, time out. I'm not even reading pressure. back into the box and then that's going to be a valid test all right click in get a little space to work with let's try this again all right can you see the pressure now yes all right see a little jump And if not, then you might need to check your septa, and you also might want to check this thermocouple um, lead that it's nice and tight. But anyway, that's kind of what, what you might do to double check that. That's a side note because I really want to focus on getting data on this thing. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to just get you some data to work with. And then I'll get therm thermocouple probe. All right, so now when you're ready to actually data log, which is what this is going to need to do, um, you can go back to the home screen. I recommend using the table. This works really nicely. And when you look in the table right now, can you see the top of that, what it says? Uh, it says no data. Yep, there it is. There you go. It had a little bit of that glare. I need my data. That sounds like a child's book I used to read. But anyway, <laughs> here we go. So um, what I would like to do is actually log temperature and pressure, right? So what, again, don't despair because we know we probably are seeing the probes, but there's nothing registering here. Click once, click again, and it says absolute pressure. That would be great. Go to the right. Oh, click click wants to get up there and then you can start arrowing around across the top okay good and then you can select oh, I'll read temperature that's good so I'm going to read pressure and temperature and then also if you want you can change the units don't uh, worry about that though because you can also take all the data and then change the units after the fact so this data logger doesn't it doesn't just lock it down in one unit and then you can't change it back but anyway so we're actually ready to start taking data um, we have temperature and pressure. If you needed another column, for example, if you wanted to also put time in there, you can go down here. Any um, commands along the bottom, I have an option of tables, I have an option of edit, I have an option of edit cell, and I have an option of statistics. Any of that I want. If it says it's right above the F4, I push the F4 and that gives me the option. So if I wanted to put a third column in, which I'll just do for grin so you can see it, I could also say, oh, I'll, and it's blank right now. So I'm going to run over to that column and say, ah, oh, what the heck, why don't we just put time in there? Just so you understand how you can add columns and take columns away. And then you assign what's in the column. Again, always go to the heading, highlight it, drop it down, and then you can choose what you want to run in that column. When you're ready to take data, it's very straightforward. It's just play and stop with the same button. So I'm going to start taking data, and here you go, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. It's, as we set it up, earlier it would have been 10 every second, so we'd just be scrolling down the screen, and that's just way too much data for this. If you want, we can give it a little variation. Make sure things are making sense. The room started off about 20, now it's heating up. That all makes sense. So everybody's happy. OK, 
Okay, when I'm done, I push this again and it stops. Okay, so now the next step is I want to take this data and get it over to Excel. Make sense? So what I need to do now is I push my tables, F4, and it says export all data. Let's go ahead and get a um, card in here. When we're talking during COVID time, we're saying students bring your own flash drives. Okay, here we go. F4, export all data. Is that where you can see it okay? There you go. You have the option to change the name here. Right now it says GLX port run one text. If you um, go ahead and just select that, that's okay. Um, the only thing you want to make sure is just double check below. It says absolute pressure export. That would make sense. Temperature export. Yes. Time export. In other words, I know I have those three data points I've been trying to watch or those three data columns, I want to export all three of them, just make sure that's highlighted. And you're good to go. Um, once everything's okay there, you can just basically say okay. If you don't like the name and you want to change it to something else, you can just, you know, click in there. It's that same idea. Anything, you know, anything that's highlighted, you can click. Anything that uh, is not, then you can arrow around to other spaces. But I have that highlighted. If I click it, then I'm actually in there where I can edit it. If you wanted to edit the name, this is like your really old cell phone. You just keep pushing and it scrolls through the options. I got, you know, 8, A, B, and C all on one key. So, you know, whatever you want to make, that might be helpful. So I've now um, edited the name. I'm going to... Um, say OK, and you can see it exporting the data to the USB. Data export is a complete OK. So now my data is on the USB port. So now we're ready to, to um, take this off to the computer. Um, before we do that, though, I just want to show you a couple other features of this thing that common things that go on with students. Um, and also, just heads up, this is not Windows-based. You don't have to somehow um, look for something to say, is it okay to remove the flash drive? It's just kind of dumb, stupid. Take it out, put it back in. That's all there is to that. Um, if I'm going to take some more data, can you look and see the top column on there? Yeah. It says run one. Mm -hmm. Now watch, I'm going to do something. I'm going to go like this and just start a new run. And now look at the top. It now oh. says run two. I stop it. I now push again. It now says run three. I stop it. So I actually have three runs now. So that's kind of interesting. So now I want to just go look what that looks like when it's time to export tables. Export all data. Okay. Um, So right now, I don't have any choices on this screen that say, oh, I want run one or I want run two or I want run three, right? So the assumption is whatever screen you saw last is the one you're going to get. So I don't want that. I want run two. Okay? So I say cancel. I'm going to go back here and look at this. That says run three. So I, again, highlight, arrow up that down and now I have the options to pick the run I want to export. I'm going to export run 2 now and all of the screens changed over to run 2 and now when I go back into export I'm actually exporting run 2. Um, so here we go. Export all data and this is why it's probably worth your time to change the name every once in a while because if you would just been blowing through this um, well, it did change. It changed to GLX port, uh, port run to text. So it did change for me. So that, that I didn't always know. But sometimes I know when students are using these over and over, the same name shows up on the computer and that gets really 
can be convoluted. So I, I, I tend to want to change these, but it's going to be up to you what you want to do. And it is a little different now because everybody's going to have their own data set. So that's good. So I'm going to export this. It's all done. Data exports complete. All right. Well, let's go look at the data. But before we do, um, I think we're pretty much done here. Every one of these sensors are running those same kind of ideas. If you like when you're running and grabbing data, you can also look at it in graphic form. So here you can actually graph. Um, right now I got time versus pressure. If I want, I can actually put two data points on there or two um, measurements at the same time. Um, so I can have pressure and temperature running at the same time. I can run two graphs simultaneously where I have temperature and pressure versus time. So you can do different runs like this. And again, I'm just going to show you, you know, once you start, you'll see the data tracking. Once you stop, that's stored. Um, by the way, if you can see the run number, it now says run four. Mm -hmm. So it kept track of the other ones. If I home page out and go down to the data table, At the top, it says run two. I'm going to highlight it. I can pull up the run four data in, in table form automatically. So, you know, the, the idea is that the data is on the data logger. These screens, in essence, are saying, how would you like to look at that data now in table form or in graph form? So that's helpful. And, and this just might be better for some students conceptually when they're watching it. It's totally up to them. Um, so that's, that's those fundamentals. Then the last piece is how do you turn this off? Um, also some warnings. It's kind of neat that it has that four run thing. I wouldn't trust that um, because quite often these kind of are a little glitchy and the batteries are very weak. So we kind of need to keep them plugged in. So if they unplug for a second and the data goes away. So that's a problem, and that's why I tend to, after runs, I download, and then I start a new run as opposed to taking advantage of that multiple run button. But you can play with that and see how things go. When it's time to turn them off, I pull the plug. Battery is working for a while, so you might have a little life. It depends which one you got a hold of. But when you're ready to turn them off, you just push the off button, button down here. And then it'll say... Uh, save changes to untitled, you can say yes, and away you go. Um, there are features to save to files. Um, don't know, with the time you have in lab, it's up to you whether you really get into training students on how to do that. But I will, maybe I'll just show you real quick, just so you guys know how to use this. I'll just restart it here. Right here is a, um, the, the main thing that comes up on the home screen in the top left is actually the data file. So if I click that once, I'm actually looking at the data file. So um, just heads up, on here it says flash. That does not mean this flash drive, that is the memory for this. So if you, um, and then it has RAM. So when you're in RAM side, that means you're in that, that you know, short-term memory of this thing. But if you want to work on saving things to the long-term memory, it's actually on this machine's flash. That's what that means. So, you know, if you want to start or alter these, you have open, save, delete, file. So you have the opportunity, even this one that you're just starting, you can click it and you can name it something unique, right, and say, open and now that new file is opened oh an error occurred but generally that would work let me try that again save okay now when i did 
the file, renamed it, said save. Now it is open. So that's the one you're working with. Um, and here's another file that we had ran earlier, the ones we were messing with just a minute ago. If I wanted to open those back up, I could do that. Um, sorry about that. So um, escape will get you back to that home page and just say open. There we go. And then that file is ready to run. So just a couple. You can put some files on here if you want. Um, you can play with that and see if it's worth your while. That does alleviate some things, though, if, if your computer goes down, if you saved it there. So anyway, let's go. Um, we're going to leave this thing. Turn it off. And um, let's go put this into Excel and see how you do that.